My name is Melody Carswell, and I'm a professor of psychology here at UK. And I've been affiliated with the VIS Center really from its inception and have served as associate director of the center. And that's something that puzzles a lot of people. You know, how, how do you put psychology together with engineering? And there are a couple of different ways that we work together with engineers. I think probably the most obvious one is to make sure that the technologies that they're developing are user-centered or user-friendly. So I'll often test some of their prototypes, um, see how people respond to them, and see how they can be improved. I got into this area because I was very interested in the space program, like so many people um, who grew up in the 60s, and I wanted somehow to be involved in that. When it became very clear I wasn't going to be an astronaut, I decided, you know, maybe I could study astronauts, and I quickly found out that there was an area called aviation psychology. It has evolved into a more general area we call human factors or engineering psychology, so we can study how humans interact with all kinds of complex systems. Many of the projects I have right now are pretty far removed from aerospace, which is, I think, actually a good thing because it's applying a lot of the knowledge we learned on aerospace projects and general experimental psychology to everyday things. It's become a real theme in my research, is trying to understand how people select their technologies in terms of trying to decide how do you pick a piece of technology or a program or a visualization of some sort to help you think better. People are plopped down and they have all these different kinds of displays, 3D displays, 2D displays, cross sections, using animation, all sorts of things, and they're not really sure how to use them effectively. So in many cases, people just stick with what they've seen before and don't even make use of the new things. We've worked in the past with first responders, and that's a really important area for this kind of research because these are people who have to make really important decisions on the fly. So first responders is one situation. Another is surgery. Uh, yet another is observing and overseeing complex manufacturing processes. Of course, aviation is an instance. And we're applying the same sort of thing to entertainment in terms of gaming. Right now, we're working um, with Rugen Young on trying to determine how to best design workstations for people who have to visualize and control and, in fact, teach robots to do welding. We are also looking at the fact that these kind of visualizations have a tremendous impact on, on creativity, and that's really going to be the currency of the future. Not so much uh, simple reaction time, you know, how fast can you do a manual task, but how well can you observe technology, how well can you select from it, and also how creative can you be with it. Mm -hmm.